Apple released the M1 MacBook Air about 18 months ago, and I have been using it almost exclusively as my desktop for the past six months. And with Apple releasing more and more Macs, including just a couple days ago, the M1 Mac Studio, the question is, how does this hold up? And so that's what we're gonna talk about today, but a couple of things to get out of the way. First of all, this is not the base model M1 MacBook Air. I did have one of those, at one point in time, more on that later, but instead this has the eighth core GPU, which costs an extra $50. It has 16 gigabytes of storage, which are 16 gigabytes of RAM, which costs an extra $200. And then I upgraded from 256 gigabytes of storage to a terabyte of storage, and that costs an extra $400. So all told, after taxes on Apple's website, instead of costing me $1,000, this laptop cost me $1,750. Um, my scope of work includes running three to five apps at all points of time during the day, um, including heavy internet browsing, right? It uses a lot of bandwidth and uh, a lot of RAM because I open up a lot of tabs and things like that. I also end up having to use a lot of like Excel worksheets. Sometimes those are very sizable. And then I do in fact do some video editing. So maybe it's just tech YouTuber bias, but a lot of people seem to really be interested in that video editing. And so how does this do with that? And I want to report that even after six months, I'm still finding myself going, wow, that's really really incredible performance. I do sometimes record in 4K, this is a 4K video, and I will layer multiple 4K streams on there, I'll add overlays, I'll do color correction, I'll add multiple audio tracks, and it handles it really, really well. Occasionally I do have to use some proxies, but unless you're willing to shell out thousands and thousands of dollars, you're going to end up using proxies in your video editing, there's just no avoiding it. Um, it, is, it is a very, very demanding thing to run multiple streams of 4K or 4K footage, right? Most of my video editing is in fact in 1080p and so it handles that just fine. I don't have to run any proxies for that. Um, so it handles video editing really, really well. And even when I had the base model uh, MacBook Pro or MacBook Air, it handled that really, really well too. The only downside with the base model is I wasn't able to have other applications open and running at the same time. It just used too much RAM to be able to like work with that footage and have the other applications running. And so sometimes I would have DaVinci Resolve crash when I was editing footage. But if you are willing to close down all your other apps, even the base model MacBook Air will handle things really, really well. I just wasn't able to, I wasn't willing to make that sacrifice or um, that concession. And so I was willing to upgrade for the uh, one that I have now. But I recommend for basically everyone to just get the base model MacBook Air. It's gonna handle your internet browsing and your word processing and your spreadsheets and just about anything else that you can throw about at it. I'm not a coder, I'm not a videographer, I'm not a photographer, so I'm not an expert in these fields, but I do believe that it will handle all of that just fine. You can let me know if I'm wrong in the comments below, but I have never had any hiccups with using this computer as my primary desktop. The only two things that I think could possibly be a drawback is number one, you have to use a dock because it only has two USB-C out um, as its IO. And that might be a downside to a lot of people. To me, I actually prefer using a dock because I like only plugging one cord in and having my entire workstation be up and powered and then unplugging it when I wanna take it on the go. Um, so I actually think that that's a plus. The only thing that I do in fact say is the only possible compromise is that it doesn't play very nice with external monitors. Um, if you plan on using more than one monitor, you need to use what's called a display link dock. Um, pluggable is a really big name in the space, but if you just get a normal dock that you would find on Amazon or something like that, you won't be able to um, power two monitors, right? And so that's a really big problem if you plan on having two monitors. I just use one 34 inch ultra wide monitor, so it's not that big of a deal for me. But I have a coworker who needed two monitors and we had, we ended up ordering the wrong mo or the wrong dock. And so then we had to order a new dock. So if you're interested in one of those docks, I'll leave a link down below in the description. Um, but then the only real thing thing that I've ever run into issues with is about three times a day, my screen will go black for just like three to five seconds, right? It's not that big of a deal. It doesn't really distract from my work. I'm okay sacrificing 15 seconds of my day um, 
you know, it's not that big of a deal for me, but that is an issue is that the MacBook Air doesn't play very nice with the monitors. And I think that's an M1 chip thing. So um, I don't expect to see that change with any other M1 Macs. Um, but those are the downsides, right? Is that you have to use a dock and it doesn't play super nice with external monitors. But for me, it's a really a no compromise laptop. So it's one that I recommend to everyone and that I think is a really, really good option. Um, the price to performance is near unbeatable um, unless you're looking for really, 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 really insane high performance, which if you are, right, if you need something more powerful for than the M1 MacBook Air, you know who you are. You're a videographer that does this professionally and you shoot cinematic footage and things like that. If you are not one of those people, then honestly, you're gonna be just fine with the M1 MacBook Air, right? It is great price to performance. It, it will age really, really well. Um, I gave my base model to my wife and she probably won't have to upgrade her computer for like 10 years, which if you think about it, you spend $900 on a computer, it lasts 10 years, that's 90 bucks a year. You'd appreciate that over the course of the year and you're only spending about eight bucks a month for your computer. And that is a really, really good deal when you think about it. So um, I think it's a really, really good value and I would recommend it to everyone. So even six months later, even 18 months after it's released, I definitely think that the M1 MacBook Air is probably the best value laptop on the market. But let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching my long-term review of the M1 MacBook Air. Thank you so much.